Today's video is sponsored by Ana Luisa. Thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Y'all already know that I'm absolutely in love with Ana Luisa. I literally am always wearing these earrings and this necklace from them. It is just some of my favorite pieces that I have, but I have quite a bit from them now. My collection is growing and it's just gonna keep, it's just gonna continue to do so because I seriously adore this jewelry brand. If you don't know or you haven't heard me talk about them before, let me tell you just a little bit about them. They are a online jewelry brand that really works to make things sustainable and good for the environment while also bringing you luxury quality pieces. So what this means is all of their jewelry is made from recycled metals, which is, you know, great because recycling is good for the environment and it's not leading to a lot of the mining and overall bad things that the jewelry kind of world does to the earth because they're using stuff that was already there and I really appreciate that but more so they are also bringing you these recycled pieces in such a beautiful luxurious way and at such an affordable rate. I feel like jewelry is one of those things where it can be so expensive especially if you don't know where to shop and where to get good quality pieces that are going to last you a long time. However, I have found the perfect place in Ana Luisa because they are beautiful high quality pieces that last forever and ever. Amen. Like I have had some pieces for the longest time. I have had some for years. Some of the ones that I wear daily have like no wear on them despite the fact that I literally wear them every day. It's kind of amazing and I just really really do love them so freaking much and if you would ever like to check them out I highly recommend that you do. You can use the information on the screen. You can use the links in the discount code down below in the description as always and thank you once again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Hello. Hopefully intro me said something that made this all make sense. But I was setting up a new bookshelf in our bedroom because we just got it in and I had the overwhelming urge to just unhaul everything. <laughs> so I did create a little unhaul pile, but I'm feeling very unforgiving with this unhaul. So I think I'm just going to go a little crazy a little wild. We'll look at the ones that I already have so far that I'm going to unhaul and then I have some over there on the shelf that I'll bring over here that I also want to unhaul and I'm filming this as I'm putting these up on Pango Books because I need to get rid of these and that is always the fastest way for me. And then here's the thing. I'm filming this unhaul because first of all I just want to. I feel like it's a cleanse to the soul but also because I have a huge book haul coming. And stick it to don't. Be surprised when you see <laughs> a big old unhaul and then a big old book haul. There's only one thing, well there's two things, that spark an unhaul for me. Extreme anxiety <laughs> and a book haul. Um, and I have just a lot of books that I need to find space for on my shelves and so I need to get rid of a lot. And there's just, I just gotta be real with myself of like these YA contemporaries, I'm not gonna read them. Middle grade, I'm probably not gonna read it. A lot of this, I'm probably not gonna a moment of silence for these books, but uh, basically if I can find them on Libby, you're not gonna find them here. <laughs> okay, okay. So let me get the first pile together and then uh, we'll go through them all. Okay, so I do have the stack. We'll get there in just a second, but what I've decided is I want to move this whole shelf over there where the middle grade is. So what I need to do is get my book of the month shelves like to two shelves because to be honest, so many of those I either already have on Kindle they're so popular that they're gonna be on Libby or I'm just not gonna read them at this point, which is fine, but like, I need to be realistic with myself. So I could get those down to two, move the middle grade over to that side because it's only three shelves and then have this horror move over there and then move all my extra fantasy over here because this whole wall just needs to be fantasy, to be honest with you. That's the that's what we're gonna do. My only problem that I have is like all this horror, so there's two horror and then two like speculative kind of stuff and then up here is like the diviners i might leave that where it is because it's kind of fantasy but it's not super fantasy. i don't know i'm also going to move some of my rainbow books 
off of there, uh, specifically like the Ember and the Ashes series because I really want to read that soon and I'm having a hard time obviously seeing what books are there because I do have this like the sprayed edges memorized but they're not as easy to see and I want to move them into the new shelves I just put in our bedroom so I can see them and read them sooner. So that's what we're gonna do with those. But let's go through this pile really quick. Okay, hello. So we have the first section because this is now turned into more than just a stack. Um, I'm on Patreon sprints with Mel right now so I'm kind of giving them like the inside scoop on the chaos that is happening. You'll be proud of me. I am also in hauling some special editions. However, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them in terms of getting rid of them. I think I am on this like buy sell trade group on Facebook that I may end up selling them in because I just feel like, you know, people go there specifically for these books. Although I don't know if anyone's going there for this first book. <laughs> But I surely hope someone... This one, actually, I may just put on Pango Books because I don't think anyone's, you know, really searching for it. But that is the Book of Night by Miss Holly Black. I don't know what edition this is. I'm going to guess it's... How oh, great? Let's see where it's published. It's in the UK, so it's either Illumicrate or this may be Fairy Loot. I don't know. It is signed, so, you know, that's cool, I guess. But I... I tried to read some of this and it was just not good. Um, I literally could not, I, I couldn't bring myself to keep going because I just didn't care. I may try it again later, but I already have, I have another edition of it. So I don't, I think I actually got the Owl Crate too. And I'm like, when did you order that? What were you going through at the time? So I need to unhaul that one too. And then I think I have, is it the Illumicrate one? That will, I'll just keep that one. We only need one. So the other special edition than this one is the one that I'm not really sure what I want to do. It is signed. It's by Illumicrate. I'm struggling if I want to truly get rid of it because it's the From Blood and Ash one and it's very pretty. Mainly what I like is under here. This is gorgeous and these spines, well there's only one, but <laughs> the spine is really pretty too. And I want to keep it for the spine, but I don't like taking dust jackets off because I'm like, I never know where to put them. And I know that people are probably, you know, wanting to complete their set. And so I feel bad just like hoarding this away when someone, you know, could use it because I know that the other ones just came out. But I'm like, what do I do with you? <laughs> what do I do? And then I always get really nervous mailing out special editions because <sighs> the US postal system, sometimes it works really well. Other times, mother nature involves herself, especially here. We're in the, uh, we're in flood season, so. And now, here we go into some other random books that I have. So I asked Melon Sprints for her advice on what should be my mark or my cutoff for these books. So if I've owned them for blank many years and I haven't read them yet, get rid of them. Unfortunately, there's a lot more that I realized and a lot of them are from Mr. Ryroard and so that's sad. But she said three years. So if I've owned them for three years and I still have not read them, it's time for them to move on. I think that's a good cutoff. It's just gonna cut off a lot. <laughs> And it's pretty much going to take out my entire, my entire YA contemporary section, which honestly I'm not that upset about. I'm not, because if I had to get rid of a section in here, it'd probably be that. So the first one is a YA sci-fi that is on my library app. I've owned this one for, let's see if this makes the three year mark. It was published in 2020 and it's about to be 2023, so it's time for this one to go. The other side of the sky. I liked these authors, they're like duo author um their first books i'm keeping those because i want to complete that series but for this one i'll catch it on the library then this one i have and i quite honestly don't even know anything about this book i don't know where i got it from i want to say that i might have pre-ordered it or i may have gotten it from the publisher but it, i mean it does say that it's a romantic new fantasy so maybe her desire to become the first great female magician. So this definitely seems like something I'd be interested in, but I just don't think I need to own a physical copy of The Midnight Bargain. I just don't think I do because I haven't picked it up yet and no one who's blurbed it is an author that I like absolutely adore. So this one really sucks because I went to a signing for Four Dead Queens. So it is a signed copy, which is really cool, but I just don't think... I'm going to read this one anytime soon. And this one is definitely, definitely over three years I've owned it. So, and then next up, I just don't have any interest in reading The Near Witch by Miss B. Schwab. 
just not for me. Uh, this one I'm unhauling from Luke Off With Love because I have another copy that is signed by her and I'd obviously rather keep that one. This one I just read and it is Funny You Should Ask. I didn't absolutely love it. I will never pick it up again. So away she goes. Okay, next up, this is one that I got from Thrift Books for sure when I was on a Leanne Moriarty kick and that is Truly Madly Guilty. It's a library copy. It has got the biggest print I think I've ever seen in my life, which I don't hate. I'll be honest with you, but um, yeah, it's time. Then I have this beautifully floppy edition of the Queens of Innes Lear. Love Shakespeare, love retellings of Shakespeare, but it's it's been, it's been a long time. 2018, yeah, sorry girl. Okay, so now we're gonna get into a lot of book of the month books because they, usually when you partner with them, they changed it now, thankfully, but they would send you all of the books to show, which totally makes sense. And I was grateful to get them because there were a lot of ones that I wanted to read, but historical fiction, memoirs, biographies, autobiographies, literary fiction, they're not really my favorite genres. They're not things that I lean to. Specifically for book of the month, I prefer their thrillers and sometimes their romances and their mysteries. And so these ones I probably was never gonna read and we're gonna get into those <laughs> shelves up there because I own some that I have the audiobook for or the Kindle and I don't need them because they're such popular picks that they usually pick. So yeah, but these are all gonna be up on, you know, good old Pango. So, you know, hopefully some people find some books that they like a lot of these. Not gonna lie to you, even though I do work with them sometimes, <laughs> um, I still have a subscription with Book of the Month that I actively use and <sighs> listen, sometimes it just happens like that, okay? Especially way back when, when I first discovered Book of the Month, I mean, because they are so much cheaper than, you know, buying the new releases in person, I was really into it, but now I'm like, I'm a little bit more picky with what I even want to buy, period. So we're slowly trying to wean me off of that and it's working so far. But the first one is The Good Left Undone. Uh, this is not book of the month. I don't know why I have it. It's Ready Player Two. I was never ready and I never read the first one, so. Then I have Well Met. I did read this one. It's a romance set at a Scarborough Fair. It was cute, but it's not a fave. I'm never gonna read it again. Then we have Before She Knew Him. I read it, uh, couldn't tell you a thing about it. The end of October. I think this could be a thriller. I don't know anything about it, but it is on my library app. So I'm gonna put this aside so I can put it on my library TBR, but it's, then this is not book of the month. It's a random one, but it's Forget Me Not. I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> uh, I have The Hunting Wives, didn't love this, so toodaloo. I have The Perishing, then I have Storm and Fury, I have The Prophets, I have The Wife Upstairs. I did read this one, I liked it okay, but it's not like my favorite, so I don't really need to keep it. Then I have another Leanne book, Apples Never Fall, Someone Tell Newton. Uh, then I have The Re the final revival of Opal, and uh, I actually have this on Libby, so. And I heard that this is a really good audiobook, so I would rather consume the story that way, since this is not a typical genre I read, and I wanna obviously like give the book the best shot that I can, which is gonna be in the format that's best for that. Um, I have Bittersweet, True Biz, and then this is Memorial Drive. I got this sent from the company that hosts this book club. So next up I have Edge Dancer. And there are tabs in this. I'll have to take them out before I post it. But this was, you know, it was like a fun, cute read, but I don't need a copy of this, to be honest with you. I have The Viscount Who Loved Me. I read this, I enjoyed it, but I have those really pretty Illumicrate editions, so I don't really need, you know, the mask paperback ones. I have Maggie Moves On. I have a finished copy of this that I was sent. This is an ARC, so I'll go put it in a free library. Then they also sent me two of these, so I'm gonna unhaul one of them, but it's Wild and Wicked Things. Actually, I think I purchased one and then I got sent one, because I think I got the Goldsboro one. And then I got, this is just, a, I mean, it's a very beautiful book, but I don't need two of them. Um, then I have a book of the month version of The Maid. I like that enough to have the book because I think I will reread it, but I wanted the uh, finished, like real 
edition, not the book of the month, because I preferred the pretty um, details that are on the cover more. Then I have The Paris Apartment. I read it. This sucked. Don't read it. I have A Shadow in the Ember. I tried to read it. I tried to buddy read this with a couple people, and um, they were much more successful than I. There are tabs in this. There are very sarcastic remarks in this. I am a little hesitant. I'm gonna actually ask Mail. Mail? Hope she's not watching this. I'm gonna ask Mel when we get off sprints or when we get off of this sprint, so in the next talking portion, if I should keep this because I really, really, really love, um, what is that called? From Blood and Ash. I really enjoyed the first two books. The series was just so dang boring for me. It was too repetitive after that. And this one kind of reads like just a recycled version of From Blood and Ash, which since I loved From Blood and Ash, that's not a problem for me. So we'll see. Also, I'm trying to like not waste having freaking bought this because I think that this was oh yeah $32 um I just finished this one people we meet on vacation wish I had never met it that was a little dramatic it wasn't that bad but it was it was so incredibly boring and I didn't want to be reading it the whole time I was reading it uh this one I just read and I did really enjoy it I think it's a really good satirical over-the-top commentary specifically about feminism and kind of like feminism eating its own and you know that whole kind of cyclical thing that people talk about uh but I'm never gonna reread it probably not gonna reference it again so I don't really need it but it's so happy for you then I don't know why I got this in the mail but I, it's a children's book that I will not read or have a child for so and then I have an arc of that same book which is gonna have to go to there's someone inside your house we're finally letting her go she can go be free uh such a fun age I read this book I can't remember much about it I think it was fine I'm not gonna reread it though so away it goes then I have this fairy loot edition I'm gonna say I don't know anything about it but reading the little blurb on the back makes me want to know about it what year were you published? <gasps> it was published this year. It doesn't make the cut. So uh, this is a spellbinding reinterpretation of Romeo and Juliet filled with romance, magic, and Chinese mythology. An arrow to the moon. I'll leave this clip in here to ask you guys if this is a good one. And then I'm going to put it over here and we'll see. Um, here is another special edition. Is it not signed? Lame. I don't know whose special edition this is, but I don't. Oh, it's a Lumicrate. I don't need it. It's Gallant. Um, those sprayed edges. I mean, they're pretty cool, but I still, I still don't need it. And then I have. I think this is a Waterstones edition, and it's also signed. And it is the Atlas Six. I have another edition of that, so I don't need it. Okay, so let's go through it. These. I love these books. And I wasn't going to pick up Call Down the Hog. I only had it because it went with this set. But I saw that Chandler just read it. And the update I saw, she didn't hate it. I need to finish that video. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not just keeping this. And it turns out it like sucks. Um, these two. I don't know. I liked this one okay. I don't remember a whole lot about it. I don't think it's enough to stay. So can we talk about like this cover so good. What happened? happened here and then I've owned this since it came out which was in 2020 so unfortunately it's the cutoff I am rounding up 2022 to 2023 because we're in the last half and this is probably gonna be the last unhaul I do this year because I'm trying to slow down on buying and all of that so we'll see but uh summer suns I just bought this one so we're gonna give it a little bit more time however house of hollows let's see oh it was a gift for my birthday. Okay, she can stay. 2021. There you go. Okay, the grace here. I've heard good things, but this is like the last shot. Next round, she'll have to go. What big teat I just bought. Strange grace. Let's see. When were you written? Oh no, 2018. It has to go. But that one's on my library, so that's okay. Uh, the Wicker King. So this one is an older title I think then like the last one or two years at least yeah this was in 2017 however I did not buy it then so this this will be we'll give her more time um I always like the beginning of these books so it's worth it to me to keep that we'll see if I read it this fall this is a 2021 so this is the last round she'll be in that weekend I just bought so we're gonna keep that these witches don't burn let's talk because while I do I enjoyed this one and I bought this one when it came out. However, do I need to own physical copies of it? And it is not gonna make the cutoff. So, 
say goodbye to the gay witches. But my audiobook copy of this is ready for me on Libro, so that's okay. This is one of my favorite freaking books of all time. I'm not getting rid of it. In fact, I'm displaying it outward. We are restless things. I don't know anything about this one. 2020. I don't know. You know who I think this looks like a cover that Kalo would like. Look at those veins. <laughs> when she's attracted to veins. Okay. The graces. Let's talk about witchy twilight. Um, this one, again, hard for me to get rid of. I have read it, and it's signed. And this was like a fun read, and I love this cover, and now I have space. So, for those reasons that aren't good reasons at all, she says. Now let's go further up, shall we? So, ooh, I'm gonna move some of these down, although I'm gonna be moving all of them over there in a minute, but whatever. Foul is fair. This was a very good book. Trigger warning for everything you can imagine. Check story graph. Uh, one of us is lying. One of us in this room is a stan. <laughs> I'm the only one in the room, but I loved it. So I'm keeping all of these because I bought them all at once and I plan to read them all at once. Just kidding, that would be really overwhelming. Ugh. Beautiful. Okay, The Coldest Touch. I think this came in a fairy loot box and I just, it's signed, that's cool and all, but I don't know if I care. It is about vampires. Oh, it's the person that wrote These Witches Don't Burn. Okay, we'll give it another chance because I really do like that and I don't know about the audiobook sitch. These ones, <laughs> hated that noise. I have not read them. I think I read the first one, but I don't remember it and I've had them for so long. And I didn't even read the physical edition. I read it via library. Bye, bye, bye. These are staying. Just kidding. <laughs> They are staying though. I love these. You know what's the funniest part? The box in the woods, the best one in the series. Um, yes, all of these are staying because I have what? It's haste. Also, this was, I think, my first Patreon book club pick. Special memes. Um, the cheerleaders is really good and I don't remember everything about it, so I'm gonna reread it. White smoke? Listen, there was something. I can't remember if this character had OCD or maybe just like obsessive thoughts, intrusive thoughts. I can't remember if like basically if she had same diagnosis as me, but this character did have a lot of obsessive compulsions around bed bugs. That was like her like kind of trigger, I would say for those thoughts. And the way my OCD related to this was a lot. And I've never seen it depicted in a way that I was like, oh my God, same, but not in a good way. So I'm gonna keep this one because I liked that depiction. Also, it's written really well. So um, what I will say is check Storygraph for all the trigger warnings because they're definitely in there. Um, None Shall Sleep just bought this one. It is about a serial killer survivor and then some other kid that get recruited by the FBI, which I don't know about that. Um, I love the Inheritance games, so they're staying. Clown in the Cornfield. The sequel just came out. Y'all need to read it. And then All Your Twisted Secrets. I bought this because it was recommended next to One of Us is Lying. So I just got this one. So we won't get rid of it right now. Sadie is one of my favorite YA mystery thriller-esque things. Recommend. Uh, Ace of Spades is also another one that I loved. Again, heavy. Heavy on the trigger warning specifically. <sighs> just the racism. There is outing in here. It's... It's a lot, so check Storygraph for sure for this one. <laughs> I know a lot of people say, what's oh, Gossip Girl meets Get Out, but I really feel like there needs to be a really heavy emphasis on the trigger warnings for this one because it's not like a lighthearted thriller. It's like, it's it's really messed up. And uh, I just wanna make sure I mention that. I really did enjoy it. It was crafted very well. It was very, it, it did freak me out when I was reading it at night. So it did its job with the thriller aspect, but just, be aware. And then the only other ones that I have up there, I am keeping all my Maniscalco books. I'm going to keep this because it's the last book in the, what is it called? The Athena Club, I think. It's the last book in there. So I'm going to keep that because I do plan to finish that series. Now the Mary Shelley Club, not 100% sure if I'm going to like it, but I do want to try it. And then all the rest is my Veronica Speedwell. And then I have the left-handed booksellers of London. And this is one that I bought within the last year. So I'm going to keep this as well. Okay, so now that we've done that, 
I think what I'm gonna do is go over to the middle grade and condense. Actually, I gotta go to the book of the month first, don't I? And I'm running out of space on my SD card, and I feel like this video is gonna be so long, I hope y'all don't mind. But I'm going to probably just unhaul those by myself, and then I'll show you, and we'll go through the stack together. But I won't do it shelf by shelf like this one. Although that is, I like unhauls like that. I prefer to film them like that, but just in case we run out of time, I'm not gonna do it. So let me clear off the card clear off the book of the month shelves and then middle grade, move these over and then we'll reconvene, okay? Okay, good morning. So it's the next day. Um, I did, actually turned into a sprints unhaul with Mel yesterday on Patreon. So instead of me just unhauling it while you're doing sprints, I just held up every single book that I own that I for sure like some of them I knew I was gonna keep because I wanted them, but others I wasn't too sure. Every single one where that was the case, I held it up and Mel pretty much ruled on that. And if I would keep it or not, and let me show you the pile that came out of that because I have to take my partner to a doctor's appointment really quick, but gotta feed Ginger, she won't let me forget that. But when I get back, I am going to film if my throat lets me, it kind of hurts from talking so much through this yesterday. But I'm going to show you a quick overview and then I'll... It's so bad, guys. Okay, so let's start with the good. So I moved all of my horror and stuff. So, you know, there's the two shelves how I've wanted. Here. Ginger, are you kidding? Girl, my, my thriller stuff is, you know, looking mighty fine there. But, uh, so I have all my... YA fantasy, some adult fantasy. All Brandon is together. This is kind of an array. Yeah, thank you, girl. And then there's all these open shelves. Isn't that, is it, it's crazy. And then here are all of the books that we unhauled. So it's that, these are the ones that we've gone over together. And this is everything else. That's the hall in the background, <laughs> which is so small in comparison to this now. Um, yeah, okay. You can see over there I moved my gothic lit and then I have my YA that's basically all of it branches off of like the Raven Boys or Thriller, my two horror. Then I have a free shelf down there. I have YA Contemporary, YA Contemporary, Romance. This YA Contemporary is ones I want to read soon so that this romance shelf can extend if I need it to. Then we have my book of the month is down to one shelf. Middle grade up here, middle grade, middle grade. And then there's some binded fanfic. And then there's some special editions up there. There's uh, there's my childhood toy. Like, it's just crazy how much room there is. But this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ma'am. This is a Wendy's. Okay. Hi, guys. So, I am finally sitting down to film the unhaul. And, uh, listen. There's a lot here. There's a lot here. And so we're just gonna go ahead and get started because, um, how do you say, dear God, what have I done? So, uh, basically, like I'd said, all of these either have been out for almost three years or more and I haven't read them or I've read them and they're fine uh, and I don't need to keep them or I just was never gonna read them and I'm too nice to the books to be honest with myself. So let's get started. A lot of these were also, like I said, people in the uh, like live stream who were like, girl, no, girl, throw it away. And look, look, isn't it worth it? Look at all this shelf space. Are you kidding? Okay, anyways. So the first one I have is Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. Haven't read it. It's cute, liked the colors. Listen. Then I have Bloom, which I tried to read multiple times, couldn't get into. Honestly, it feels like I read it at one point. I can't remember. To me, that's a sign. Then I have Winter House, which is a middle grade that I really thought I'd read. I have The Problem Children, another middle grade, Witchwood, and Furthermore, which no one really told me anything about on the stream, and they decided I should unhaul it. Another problem is I've had so many of these books since they came out, and it's like... <laughs> Some of the oldest ones are like 2012. <laughs> I was still in high school. Um, Shielded, this was a, I think a fairy loot book. Uh -uh, not for me. I have the Demon King, this is a throwback. I have Ash Princess. I also looked up a ton of these on my library app and they're there, so we'll just get them there. I have All the Stars and Teeth. While I really did enjoy this one, I'll have to take out a lot of tabs, which I am separating those out so I can take the tabs out before I move on, but I, I 
have yet to pick up the sequel. I don't see myself rereading that one. No point. I have Gideon the Ninth. I am planning to pick this up because of Miss Erin from Booked and Busy, but I don't need that copy because Illumin Crate is coming out with much prettier ones, and I plan for those. I read some of Gideon the Ninth though when it first came out and I did like what I read. I just wasn't in a sci-fi mood, but I am now. So now might be the time. I also have the Guinevere Deception. I love King Arthur. I love Merlin. I love all of that. And I love this edition, but I think I don't love Miss White's writing. I think I don't. Um, let me just say, Sight Witch, I love this series, but I don't do novellas. We all know that. Only mostly devastated A Taste for Love, The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding, the Apollo books, the stickers are still on. Not a good sign. The Family Upstairs, I enjoyed this. I'll never reread it. And I'm noticing a pattern of that with thrillers is I'll probably never reread them, save for ones that border horror or like, sorry, Riley Sager. I am still a stan. I think his books are great. Seven Lies, seven reasons to get rid of it. Uh, Golden Sun and Red Rising. I'll have to get rid of all of these tabs uh, before I put it up on Pango, but I have the fairy loot editions. So I'm just keeping the other two, which are right there. And then hopefully if they ever come out with matching ones for Red Rising, that'd be really cool. But I don't know if I'd even be able to get them. House of Dragons. I got the TV show. Just kidding. I know they're not the same thing. Um, the Invasion of the Tearling. I'm keeping the first book because if I'm gonna read it, great. If not, at least it's only one book. And I still have some room to keep those kinds. Um, the Thousand thousand the dazzling heights i got this on kindle so i don't really need the physical copies this is a really fun book though it's like gossip girl in the future in like the year 3000 kind of thing uh and i i would definitely recommend it if you liked gossip girl and you like very light sci-fi it's a really fun read and i have yet to continue on but this the drama is good then i have arch enemies and renegades Gotta remove the tabs of that one. I do highly recommend Renegades. It was very good. Um, I just don't need to keep, you know, super lot of copies of it. Super lot of copies. I don't even know. Uh, then I have Cul-de-sac. I don't know. I have Steel Heart by Brandon Sanderson. I was advised not to read that series or book. An absolutely remarkable thing. I love Hank Green but I've owned that book for so long. Uh, I am getting rid of all of the Jade or the Greenbone Saga books because I have the Illumicrate ones now. And I'm just, I'm trying to get better about not owning so many versions of the same book. Some of them, it's just, it's just gonna happen. It is what it is. For a lot of them, it, it doesn't need to happen, you know? Then I have A Darker Shade of Magic, Gathering of Shadows, and Conjuring of Light. I just don't need them. Um, I have Beasts of Prey, but I grabbed this one on audio because I heard that that was a really good way to listen to it. Obviously, audio is a way to listen to it. Really good way to read it. <laughs> the Shadow of What Was Lost. I just wanted to be a fantasy girl. Don't know what it's about. Uh, the Black Tongue Thief. Mel and I asked the tarot cards. They said to get rid of it, so who am I to deny? Then I also have the Bone Shard Daughter. Still on the TBR. I think I would like it. She was saying that I'll probably like it, but I just don't need the physical copy because the audiobook was what was recommended to me. So we're going to do it that way. Then I have Iron Widow. This is the Illumicrate version. And I just, I feel bad holding on to special editions of books that I am not going to read because people will probably love it and want to collect them. So I'll throw that up on the old Pango. Then I have Eight Will Fall. I highly recommend this, by the way. It was a really good sci-fi horror and I feel like no one actually <laughs> read it once it came in. It's signed. I just can't remember what what box it was in, but it was probably, I want to say it was probably fairy loot, but I'm really not sure, but it was really good. You should, you should read it. Um, I have this sci-fi fantasy series, their fractured lights. Then I have they never learn, which is a thriller. Here are the other two in that sci-fi series I've mentioned. And I have the end of October, which I think is a scientific thriller. And then I decided to pick these up on audio. So I have those on my Audible app instead of the physical copies, because I really did like the audio of the first one. And I have His and Hers. I've just owned it for so long. These Violent Delights, I was told was not very good. Then I have this edition of Vicious. This is one of my favorite duologies of all time. I just don't need two copies. So I kept the cuter, smaller, 
smaller UK ones. Meet You in the Middle I found out has a Trump fanfic, so we're gonna get rid of that real quick. Uh, the Unexpected Everything. I really enjoyed this book when I read it when it first came out. Highly recommend if you like YA Contemporary. I just don't need to keep it. Uh, Dear Sweet Pea. Such a cute freaking cover, but not really reading middle grade. Puddin, I have read and enjoyed quite a bit. Um, the Upside of Unrequited, owned it since it came out. Then I have Little Darlings, Everything We Didn't Say, Invisible Girl, The Turn of the Key, Big Summer. These are just a bunch of very popular ones that I have. Well, The Turn of the Key I want to reread, but I like the actual cover of it more, the shiny one, so I'll go with that. Um, I'll probably find it at a half price or something like that and it'll be way cheaper anyways. The other ones are just very popular titles that I haven't read yet, but they're all on my library app. Then I have The Violent Season, I have Everless, This Golden Flame, which was a book box one. I have The Winner's Kiss, The Winner's Crime, The Winner's Curse. I have Normal People. I don't know why I thought I'd read that. Uh, one to Watch, The Four Winds. Don't know why I thought I'd read that. Um, I have Sanatorium. Got the audio for that one. The Practical Magic books. I don't know what I was thinking. Shadow in the Ember. I'm still debating. <laughs> Oh, I also have The Gifted School, which I thought that this would be a rich mom drama thing, but I, I don't think it is. Okay, now I have a bunch of romance. We really like cleared that section out. So I have Accidentally Engaged, The Simple Wild, Much Ado About You, Ties That Tether, uh, Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating. I read it, didn't love it. One Last Stop, I've heard too much. April May Fall, To Have and To Hoax, uh, Twice in a Blue Moon, The Hating Game, The Bookshop of Second Chances. Uh, I have The Wedding Night, which is a thriller. I have The Plot. This is an art. Uh, the Last Thing He Told Me. I have The ALC, The Friend Zone, My Friend Anna, Anxious People. I'm not that girl. Another Lisa Jewell. Audiobooks are the way to go for hers, I believe. One Italian Summer, No Exit. Honey Girl, To Love and To Loathe. That's an arc though. I decided to grab the audiobook of this one, so it will be going. Daughter of the Pirate King, here for it. I think that's nonfiction. She's Too Pretty to Burn, Hide. I haven't heard anything good. Uh, a Stephen King, Steel Crow Saga. I have not read it in forever. The Bride Test, Second First Impressions, How to Love Your Neighbor, The Off Limits Rule, I was told was not good, uh, The Holdout, this one, The Survivors, this one I've had for so long, uh, How Lucky, This Karen Slaughter, Miss Emily Henry's other book, uh, and then Anna Kay, because I have the audiobook of that. You Had Me at Ola, We Hunt the Flame, I want to get the uh, traditional paper or hardcover of that one. The Devil in the White City, have the audiobook at my library. Once There Were Wolves, Enchante, I've tried to read this and I just couldn't get into it. I have another edition of this, okay. Um, House of Salt and Sorrows, I actually really liked this and I do kind of want to reread it so I may get the traditional hardback of it, but I've taken out so many tabs. Um, Book of Night, Darling Girl, The Lost Apothecary, Always and Forever Laura Jean. I did not like this last installment that much. Love and Gelato was fine, but I don't really need to keep it. This time next year, The Removed, Bringing Down the Duke, another Ellen Winter, whatever her name is, another copy of Honey Girl, The Killer Across the Table, nonfiction. It'll be better on audio for me. I just know it. <sighs> and then the other Anna K book, um, Hour of the Assassin, I don't know, but it still sounds interesting. Uh, A River Enchanted, I was not gonna read that. Uh, Finlay Donovan is Killing It, this is an arc, and I don't have the other ones as arcs, so I don't want the paperback copy. Don't You Forget About Me, not that kind of guy. It's Raining Men, it's raining outside right now. The Throne of Fire, I'm keeping the first one, and if I read it and I like it, Pango always has Rick Riordan books. Leave the World Behind. One Day in December was fine. Uh, imposter Syndrome, The Damage. Sounds very dramatic. Girl A, I'm a little confused on the title of this. <laughs> the Heart Principle, The Star Cross Sisters of Tuscany. Um, I've got your number. <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker. Gotta take out the tabs that I was desperately trying to care about. The Dating Plan. 
How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days. Another one of this lady's books, Daisy Jones and the Sixth. I'll probably try to find an actual copy at half price, I think. The Neighbor's Secret, Too Good to Be True, Necessary People, Part of Your World, Rapid Fire, Bonfire, Circe, the original cover is cuter, I'm not gonna lie to y'all here. Well Played, the first one was fine, 99% mine. I have not heard anything good about that, so why even test it? Take a hint at Danny Brown because someone else needs to also be blessed in their life, and I bought the Illuminate editions. Uh, written in the Stars, haven't read it, owned it for so long. From Twinkle with Love and When Dimple Met Rishi. I really liked this one, but I've had this one for forever. And also I don't really plan on rereading this one because I just don't think I'm into YA contemporary anymore. There's the ad. Um, Lost in the Neverwoods. I bought that for a uh, Patreon book club that I was, that was reading it. And then um, Miss Thing told me it was not good. So goodbye. American Panda. And then this adventure ends. And on that note, this adventure ends. Um, that's it. That's all. <sighs> Thanks for tuning in. Now I'm going to clean up my office and use all of my waking hours to put all of these on Pango Books and try to set up my desk in a way that makes sense. So yeah, this is a mess. Good God, I can't wait for these to all be shipped out. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you got all the way here, definitely leave like a packing box emoji or something like that because these are packing up and shipping out. Thank God. And um... Yeah, tune in for the haul that's going to inevitably fill these shelves right back up. Although this is a little impressive. How much space is here? It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's almost an entire eight. Yeah, it's, almost, it's like an entire bookcase and then a couple more shelves. So, huh. not to brag, but hello. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, night, wherever you are. I'll catch you in the comments down below and in my next video. Bye.